Hi guys, I'm Maylin Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. And I want to talk about the famous three to one pull to push ratio. Uh, how did this ratio come about? Uh, why do we find it in the, in the training world? Um, I think there, there are a couple of reasons behind it that were well intended. Um, one of the reasons for that ratio was to correct posture. So a lot of people have that uh, kyphotic uh, forward head, rounded shoulders posture. Um, and what the intention of a three to one push pull ratio was, was to not continue to feed into that kind of posture by letting people push, do push exercises in the gym uh, as often as they, as they did pull exercises. So we were trying to do more pulling than pulling to, pulling than pushing to correct that posture. Now, first of all, um, we know that posture is influenced by many other things, uh, visual input, vestibular input, uh, proprioception, all that kind of sensory information coming in. And, and there's much more involved in correcting posture if that's something that we want to do uh, than you know, strength, strengthening and stretching muscles. So that's, that's one thing. Um, the other problem I have with that three to one uh, pull to push ratio is that you could be pulling wrong just as much as you're pushing wrong. Um, as a matter of fact, if we look at how people um, with bad scapular mechanics or bad uh, control of uh, the head of the humerus or bad humeral head centration, um, if we look at these people, it's actually going to be harder or, or they're actually going to feed into that more so when they pull than when they push and now we're, 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 you know, we're asking them to pull more than they push. So we are actually still feeding into that um, mechanism. So really what I'm trying to say is if you learn proper positioning for pushing and pulling, which is actually the same positioning in regards to the scapula, you're not going to run into a problem. And just offsetting pushing and pulling, but not having the good mechanics is not going to solve any of the problems. So it, it was a well-intentioned kind of foolproof way of making sure that people who were already like this didn't end up in the gym just doing bench press, um, which is fine if you have no other element of control than that. But I think what it leads to is kind of like over cueing. We start cueing instead of teaching. So now we start relying on this ratio instead of teaching people proper pushing and pulling mechanics. Okay. So really, if you have appropriate scapular mechanics, you're going you're gonna to have that proper positioning for pushing, which is going to be the same proper positioning for pulling. So you're not going to run into feeding into pushing and getting a forward, uh, a forward shoulder positioning. Okay. Now, and if we talk about that specific people who have that forward position of the shoulder, so, so shoulders more anterior, they'll have a lot of anterior humeral glide, right? So they have excessive movement of the head of the humerus anteriorly, which is more, perhaps more difficult to control in a pulling motion even than a pushing motion. So asking them to pull more than they push won't really fix the problem for these people. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to establish proper mechanism because people are going to access what they have access to. People are going to move with what they have access to. So if we want them to move differently, we need to give them access to something different, right? Makes sense. Okay, so really um, the first step is establishing proper scap mechanics. What does it feel to position my scaps properly for pushing as well as for pulling so that the head of my humerus is in a proper position. If my scapula is tilted and my shoulder is forward, then of course I'm going to use my biceps more and let the head of the humerus glide forward. So first set the intention, which is proper positioning of the scapula. So one exercise, Mark, I'm going to have you come in here that I like to use for creating that awareness. You're going to lie down on your stomach. And then palms are gonna face down at the hips, just a little bit away from the hips, good. And from here, you're gonna totally relax the shoulders, let them roll forward. So here his shoulders are roll forward. So what I'm gonna want him to do is 
not squeeze the shoulder blades, not that classic squeeze your shoulder blades together. I'm gonna say just unroll your shoulders. So peel your shoulders off the ground. Good, that's it. So you see how that's just a slight retraction and then slide your fingers down towards your heels and slight depression. And then relax again, let the shoulders roll forward. Boop. And then do that again, peel the shoulders and reach down. So it's a slight retraction depression, okay? It's not a squeeze the shoulder blades together. Do that for me, squeeze the whole shoulder blades hard. See how different that looks, okay? So that positioning, that awareness of that position is important. Another exercise we like to use as well that's a little bit more advanced is the reach, roll and lift, which you have in um, some uh, previous capsules that, I, that I've um, done, okay, on the blog. Now, second, what we wanna do now that we've set that intention, you can come up out of there, Mark, is how am I going to now load him and make sure that he maintains that position? So make sure that when I load him, he doesn't go back to this. Okay, he doesn't go back to that anterior projection of the humeral head because as soon as I put him under load, I can create this intention of having that better centration. But as soon as I put him under load, either pushing or pulling, if he goes back to this, I haven't really done anything. So what can I do as far as choosing exercises to drive that position and create that awareness so that he can learn to push and pull the right way? Well, <laughs> bands do have their uses because I harp on bands a lot, but they can actually be useful. Okay, so one of the exercises, if we're looking at pulling, we're gonna use a ring row or a TRX row. He's gonna have the band between the wrists and he's gonna use a neutral grip on the row. So come out facing this way and you'll be standing like this, yeah. <laughs> not too far under so that you're not too uh, horizontal, good. Now. Neutral is a bit easier to start and you could progress this to a pronated grip, but that'll be more difficult to control the head of the humerus. So neutral is easier to start. And what I want him to do is instead of just rowing like he normally would, keeping his elbows close to the body, as he rows, I'm actually gonna want him to slightly pull the band apart. So he's gonna row and pull apart. So it becomes much easier for him now to feel and control that anterior glide of the humeral head, okay? Because the fact that he's needing to pull that band apart, he involves the scap a little bit more and he gets that feeling. And as we start to drive this, and as you start to progress this, you can have him pull the band apart less and less and just do a tighter row, but maintain that, that position. So he's still here, but he's gonna pull it apart less, less than he did so before and pull and make sure that he keeps that same positioning, not letting that shoulder glide forward, okay? So this is a good way to grind that position under load, thank you. And we can do the same thing with a pushing exercise. And now you could do this with a barbell bench press if you wanted to as well, same thing, maybe a little bit less resistance with the band. And he's gonna do a dumbbell floor press and he's gonna have that band between the wrists, again, uh, lying on your back. Floor press. <laughs> he's gonna do renegade rows. Those are fun. And so same thing, as he comes down, he's gonna to have to kind of pull the band apart a little bit to get into his press position. Good, and up. Awesome. So same thing, now we're getting, we're making sure that he has that proper position as he's doing his press. Okay, so all we're trying to do with this band is cue that scapular positioning. Thanks, you can put them down. All right, so main highlight is three to one pull to push ratio is really not that important if you're teaching your clients to push and pull appropriately. As a matter of fact, if they have excessive anterior humeral glide, pulling is actually 
harder. It's, it's actually harder to control that in pulling. So asking them to pull three times more than they push is usually not going to solve the problem. And again, are we using these kinds of solutions as, as, a, as an alternative to actually teaching our clients to do things the right way? Okay, so having the right positioning for pushing and pulling um, is going to be quite similar. And so you're not going to run into imbalance problems if you make sure that people have the right positioning and are doing things pushing and pulling the proper way.